Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome back. Hey, I'm sorry I'm not there with you this morning, um, but I wanted to tell you I'm flying home from Austin, Texas right now. Um, so that's why I can't be with you today. I um, sure wish I was. But um, what I want to do today is just kind of go over um, some of the um, stuff we were doing right before break, okay? And one of them was finding extreme, okay? So let's just jump in and start talking about this, okay? So first example is this determine the absolute minimum value of the function f shown above on the interval negative nine to nine. So it's an open interval. So we're not including the endpoints. Okay. And if there is no absolute minimum, then submit an empty set. Okay. So your, your, your problem set is going to come from Delta math today. Okay. All right. So if we want to determine the absolute minimum, so basically what we're looking at is what's the lowest Y value, right? What's the smallest Y value overall on this entire graph? And it's going to happen right here. And that minimum that absolute minimum value is going to be negative seven. So we have an absolute minimum. Of negative seven and it's actually going to occur at two places it's going to occur at x equals negative two and at x equals and right over here it's going to happen at x equals five so it's actually happening at two places okay now i want to change this problem a little bit and that's it that's our answer to this right now in delta math they're just asking you for the absolute minimum so you're just going to type in negative seven that's all you have to type in you don't have to type in the location for this for this, these particular problems, okay? But I do wanna talk about this. What about an absolute maximum? Does this graph of F have an absolute maximum? You may be thinking, well, right here at the left end point, but we're not including it. So re remember that if I pick one, right, just to the right of that end point, okay? Like pick one right here, where my, the tip of my pen is, right? If I pick one right there, well, guess what? If I move a little bit closer to that end point, and the, in other words, a little bit to the left, I'm going to be a little bit higher, right? And I could continue doing that. And I never actually can actually reach that, that point right here. So we are never going to have an absolute maximum on this graph. It doesn't have it, all right? It has absolute minimum, but it doesn't have an absolute maximum. All right? All right, let's go to the next problem. All right, for this next example, we determine the absolute maximum value of the function f shown above on, and this time we have a closed interval, negative to nine. So we have a closed interval and we have a continuous function. So remember that extreme value theorem, the extreme value theorem says, okay, if you have a continuous function and it's on a closed interval, you're guaranteed to have both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. So if we look here, we do have an absolute maximum. The highest Y value is right here and it is three and it's occurring at X equals negative five. So we would say absolute maximum of, and it would be three and it's occurring at X equals negative five. It's not, this one's not an absolute maximum because it's not the highest, right? It is, it, if we, we're going to see in just a little bit, I'm going to have some problems. It's a relative maximum, but it's not an absolute maximum, right? Remember, remember relative is like in a little neighborhood of that point. That's the biggest in that little neighborhood, okay? All right, so that's example two. Let's go on to example three. So this next example, okay, really is not calculus, but we're going to have to learn how to read graphs like this, Okay. So that's why I threw it in here. Um, we want to determine all intervals on which f of x, so that's f, remember, f of x is your y's are greater than or equal to zero on this closed interval negative nine to nine. So we're looking at right here is where our y values are positive or zero. So from negative nine to negative eight, but then down in here, all our y values are negative. And then y values are zero at negative three and then all the way they're going to be um greater than zero all the way until positive nine okay so f of x is greater than zero on and we would say negative nine to negative eight and we would include both endpoints because we're also including where it's zero that's why we're going to include the negative eight and then also from negative three to positive nine. So we could write a union here and then negative three to positive nine, including. 
all right? If you wanted to use inequalities, it would look like this, negative nine less than or equal to X, less than or equal to negative eight, or, and then negative three less than or equal to X, less than or equal to nine. So I think it's easier just to do the interval notation, but if you want to use the inequalities, go ahead, go right ahead, okay? All right, that's it for that. So for this next example, we want to determine all X values for which the graph of F has a relative maximum on the open interval. So this is looking at just a little, little neighborhood and is it the largest value in that neighborhood, okay? So you look right here, it's flattening out right here, but that's not a relative maximum because right before it we're larger and after it we're less, less than it, right? And we're doing that all the way. This would be a relative minimum. If you just look in this little neighborhood right here, that would be the, uh, a relative minimum. It would also be the absolute minimum too. Coming back up, okay, we'd have a flattened out point right here, but that's not a relative min or a relative max, okay? And then coming up here, right here, right here at this X value right here, we have a relative max. So that's where it's gonna occur. And that's gonna happen at X equals seven. So F, has a relative maximum at x equals, I believe it was seven. Yeah, at x equals seven. So in Delta math, you're just gonna type in seven um, for the x value, okay? And then for this last problem that deals with graphs, we wanna determine all x values for which the graph of F has a horizontal tangent line on the closed interval, negative nine to nine. Okay, so we're going along and we look at all the tangent lines in here are, and we're looking for a tangent line, right? We're looking for a slope that's zero for the tangent line, right? So right over here, all of our slopes for every point on the graph right here, they would all be negative, right? And then right here, it looks like we'd have a zero, right? A slope that's zero right in here. And then after that point, we have positive slope. So it's happening right here at X equals negative five. We would have a horizontal tangent there. So basically we're looking for hills and valleys, right? So we have a little valley right here and we're looking and right in here, all the slopes are positive. And then after this point right here, all the slopes are negative. Well, that would mean that we went from, po from positive slopes to negative slopes. We would have had to have hit zero. So we also have one right here. And then we have another one right here at X equals five. And then we look and then right here, right here, we have another one. Okay, so determine all X values in which F has a horizontal tangent line on the closed interval. So F has a horizontal tangent line at, and it would be these value, X values, X equals negative five, X equals zero, X equals five, and x equals, and this would be seven. And we've talked about this before, so this shouldn't be a big deal, okay, either. All right? Okay, what if you're not given the graph? And that's what the next example is going to involve is what if you're not given the graph, you're just given the function, okay? So this is the next example, given the function f of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x minus 10, determine the absolute maximum value of f on the closed interval from negative 2 to 1. So we have a closed interval, and this is a polynomial function, and all polynomial functions are continuous. So f of x is continuous on the closed interval negative two to one. So because it's continuous by the extreme value theorem, we're guaranteed to have an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum, okay? So fx is continuous on negative two to one by the extreme value theorem, EVT, there, there must 
be an absolute max and an absolute min. on this interval negative two to one. Okay, so how do we go about finding it, right? This tells me I have it, but how do I find it, right? So recall that what we have to do here is we are going to have to take the derivative and we're gonna have to find the critical point. So that's the first step is find the derivative And then once we find the derivative, that would be f prime of x. And the derivative of x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x minus 10 would be 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. And then we want to find the critical numbers, critical points, okay? Find the critical values. There's a lot of different ways you can say that. Okay, so that to find the critical values, recall that to find the critical values, that means we have to determine where f prime of x is equal to zero and where f prime of x is undefined, right? So you look at this, okay, what's the derivative? Well, the derivative is another polynomial, right? Okay, so it could be zero, all right? So we have 3x squared plus 6x plus 3, and it has to equal 0. And you need to look at this, okay, there's a GCF here, right? There's a GCF of 3. That's going to make your, our factor a little bit easier, okay? So 3 times, and this becomes x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And then x squared plus 2x plus 1, that factors into x plus 1 and x plus 1. or x plus one squared if you wanted to go that far. Okay, but if you look at this, right, these are these are duplicate uh, factors. So they're the same factors. So they're gonna give you the same x value. So this is gonna happen when x equals negative one. When x is negative one, that is gonna cause the derivative to be zero. And negative one is in this interval, negative two to one, right? Now, since the derivative is a polynomial or in particular, a quadratic, right, because a quadratic is just a specific type of polynomial function, then that means f prime of x could never be undefined because this function, the derivative function, is defined for all x values because it's a parabola, okay? So this is never going to be undefined. So we don't even have to worry about that in this particular problem, okay? All right, so now what do we do? How do we find this absolute maximum value? Well, next is take the critical values and also take the endpoints and we're gonna check them, okay? So we're gonna check critical points or critical values and endpoints. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate the function at those values. So we wanna find f of negative two. Now why negative two? Because that was the left endpoint then the critical point is at negative one. So that'd be F of negative one. And then the right endpoint is one. So we also wanna find F of one. Now, whichever one of these is the largest one, that, sorry, that is gonna be, okay, our absolute maximum. So remember F of X is this X cubed, this function up here, let me slide it down. Remember our F of X is this X cubed plus three X squared plus three X minus 10, right? So that means f of negative two would be negative two cubed plus three times negative two squared plus three times negative two and then minus 10. So this would be when we cube negative two, that would give you negative eight. When we square negative two, that gives you four times three is plus 12 minus six and then minus 10. So this would be four minus two, which is negative two, and then minus 10, which is negative 12. And I'm just double checking my math on that. Yeah, negative 12. And then negative one, that'd be negative one 
cubed plus three times negative one squared plus three times negative one minus 10. And this would give you negative one. This would give you plus three. This would give you minus three and then minus 10. And so these two are gonna cancel out. So really you're left with negative 11. And then f of one would be one cubed plus three times one squared plus three times one minus 10. And that would be one and this would be plus three and then plus another three and then minus 10. And so that'd be six and one, which is seven and then seven minus 10 would give you negative three. And so we're looking for the largest one, right? So, so of these, the largest one is negative three. So that's our absolute maximum, okay? So F of X has, let me slide it up, has an absolute maximum of negative three at x equals one, all right? And so that's how you do it um, when you have um, one of these, um, when you're given a function and I'm asking you um, to find the absolute max and the absolute minimum, all right? You're gonna have, and, and it has to be a, you need to have a closed interval to guarantee it too. Otherwise you probably would need to look at the graph, okay? But we didn't even look at the graph of this, right? And we can find the absolute maximum value without it, okay? So that's it, guys. Um, again, sorry I'm not here with you guys. Um, I am high in the sky, right? Uh, flying across the United States right now. So I will see you guys um, tomorrow. Have a wonderful day and get the work done, okay? All right, have a great day, guys. Bye.